technologies. So today I'd like to talk about uh, shrinkage, specifically the differences in shrinkage between amorphous and semi-crystalline plastics. Also, I'd like to look at uh, what happens when we apply additives to the plastic, specifically if we apply colour. How does this affect the shrinkage too? And what about a process? Can our process affect the shrinkage as well? So specifically, what happens uh, when we have uh, different cooling rates, for instance? And also how the pressure gradient within the cavity can also affect the shrinkage and with it, warpage. So, Let's look at the main difference then between a semi-crystalline and an amorphous material. So we've got two parts here, made on the same mould, but in different materials. So we've got PCABS, which is an amorphous material. Generally, amorphous materials will have a shrinkage level of around about 0.5 to 1%. They can vary slightly from that. A semi-crystalline material, such as this, so this is low-density polyethylene. So low density polyethylene and other semi-crystalline materials will generally have a shrinkage rate of around about 1.5 to 3% shrinkage. And again, it could vary from that. One thing to remember though, is that particularly with semi-crystalline materials, we can affect the shrinkage, particularly with cooling. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's look at the uh, shrinkage rates of these two different materials then, running on this same mould. So if we look at the PCABS first, we can see um, that there is a difference in the shrinkage. So if you look at that, you should be able to see that the amorphous material on the right of my side is bigger than the semi-crystalline, the low-density polyethylene. And if we look at that as an overall shrinkage rate, so on the length of the PCABS, the amorphous, we're actually getting about 0.83% shrinkage. On the width, we're getting about 0.74% shrinkage. The difference between that and the semi-crystalline, well, the first thing, there's a visual difference. Hopefully you can see we've got warpage on this particular part. So that warpage is caused by the excessive shrinkage that we've got on this semi-crystalline material. Okay, so if we look at that as a percentage then, so on the length of this semi-crystalline part, we've got about 2.18% shrinkage. And on the width, we're getting about 2.14% shrinkage, okay? So if we were to look at that as an actual size, we can actually see that on the width, we're getting about 2.9, almost three millimeters difference in the size. Whereas on the length, we're getting even more. We're getting about 3.5 millimeter difference in the actual part size. So that's all down to the different levels of shrinkage. So why do we get more shrinkage on the semi-crystalline material? Well, first of all, we've got to look at the structure. So the structure, the molecular structure, when a semi-crystalline cools, it takes up a more ordered structure than an amorphous. So we generally will have more shrinkage along the flow than across the flow. But the big difference is the crystals. So only a semi-crystalline material will have crystals, and those crystals are only there when the plastic or the semi-crystalline plastic is solid. So as we heat a semi-crystalline material up, at a certain point, within 10 degrees, the crystals start to dissolve. And as those crystals dissolve, it becomes a low viscosity liquid. So we've got a definitive melting point, and the crystals will only reform when we cool it. An amorphous material is different. As we heat it up, it hasn't got any crystals, so it hasn't got a definitive melting point. So it will just get softer, the viscosity will reduce, it will flow easier as we increase the temperature. So this crystal growth that occurs during the cooling is important because we can affect that crystal growth by temperature. So for instance, if we were to increase our mold temperature, it will allow the crystals to form longer. We'll get more crystal growth. And that extra crystal growth will give us more shrinkage. So the hotter the mold, even the melt temperature will have an effect on this. The hotter the melt temperature, the more crystallinity, the more shrinkage that we will get. 
Now, mold temperature won't really have an effect on shrinkage on amorphous, but it will on a semi-crystalline. So we need to be aware of that on our process because any variation in our mold temperature, our process, if we've got critical part sizes, that could give us problems uh, when we're molding with different size parts. So looking at uh, crystallinity in a little bit more detail then. So here I've got a PET bottle. So this is a semi-crystalline material. So generally the clear plastics are amorphous because the crystals basically uh, turn the plastic uh, milky or opaque. To get these clear, they're cooled very quickly. They're crash cooled. Okay, so if we look at the neck of this bottle, it's quite clear. What we can do, so if you look at this, uh, another bottle here, what I've done with this, again a PET bottle, originally it was clear, cooled very quickly, but I've, all I've used here is a paint stripper gun to heat the neck of this up, and I've let it cool slowly in the atmosphere. Because it's cooling slowly, lots of crystals are formed, and you can see now it's become opaque. So the, the neck of that bottle is now opaque because it's full of crystals. But also you can see it's distorted now. So it's lost its shape, again, because of the huge amount of crystal growth we've got and the much higher level of shrinkage caused by us allowing more crystals to grow. So just think about it. In your process, you can affect that crystal growth. Higher mold temperature, more crystals will be encouraged to grow so we'll get more shrinkage. Lower mold temperature, less crystals will grow, we'll get less shrinkage. Right then, so what about the addition of colour? How will that affect our plastic parts? So here we've got uh, a very simple part, so it's a colour plaque. Uh, we've got it being made in polypropylene, and also we've got the addition of 3% master batch on this one. So how will this affect shrinkage? Well, the first thing to remember is that the master batch, this blue master batch has a substance called phallocyanine. And what that does, that increases crystallinity. Now, remember, anything that increases crystallinity will affect shrinkage. More crystallinity, more shrinkage, less crystallinity, less shrinkage. So how does that equate then to part sizes on this? So as a shrinkage level, if we look at uh, the clear one to start with, so this has 2.4% shrinkage as an average on the length and 2.1% shrinkage as an average on the width. If we compare that to the blue, so the blue has 2.9% average shrinkage on the length and 2.69% average shrinkage on the width. Now, as far as size con is concerned, that equates to about 0.3 of a millimeter difference on the width and the length on these relatively small parts. Now, if you're making buckets and bowls, that might not be such a big issue, but if you're making critical part sizes, then that certainly could affect uh, the function of the parts, they might not fit together. If you've got parts that uh, maybe have snap fits, they've got to fit together, then the addition of a master batch could cause you problems. So what can you do about that? Well, on some parts, you might be able to change process conditions to affect the shrinkage, uh, but you might not be able to do that. So you might find that you're in a situation on certain colors um, particularly colours that have phallocyanine in them, that you might need to have different steel cuts, so different uh, cavities, cores or inserts uh, to allow you to achieve your desired part sizes. Okay, so just remember, the addition of colour will also affect shrinkage on a semi-crystalline material because it affects the rate or the amount of crystallinity that we're going to get. Okay, what about the pressure gradient then? So we, we, we uh, briefly mentioned this, or I briefly mentioned it right at the start. So what is a pressure gradient then? So basically a pressure gradient can only be measured if you have pressure, cavity pressure sensors inside your mould. So generally to measure the pressure gradient, you would need a pressure sensor near the gate 
and also at the end of the cavity, the last area to fill in the cavity. Now the difference between the pressure at the gate and the end of the cavity is your pressure gradient. Now remember, the only thing that causes pressure inside the cavity is the plastic. It's the plastic pushing against the steel inside the cavity. So if we were to fill slowly, for instance, that plastic will cool. It will take longer to get to the end of the cavity. It will cool more. It will shrink more. So that's why generally the pressure at the end of the cavity is lower than at the gate. Now, think about something else. Pressure affects shrinkage. Higher pressure means less shrinkage. Lower pressure more shrinkage. So generally, if you've got a big difference between the pressure at the gate and the end of the cavity, you're going to have different levels of shrinkage in the same part. Different levels of shrinkage in the same part means one thing, warpage. So as an example, if we look at this part here, so there's our gate. Let's say we have 200 bar pressure at the gate. Now, let's say we inject slowly, and by the time we get to the end of the cavity, we've got 80 bar. So 200, take away 80, gives us a pressure gradient of 120 bar. So there would be 120 bar difference in the pressure. Now that could cause warpage due to uh, pressure gradient. If we were to inject fast, which a lot of molders know that to keep parts flat, you need to inject fast, but they don't really understand why. So let's say we're injecting fast. Let's say we have 200 bar at the gate. Now, when we inject fast, the plastic will get to the end of the cavity quicker. It'll have less time to cool and shrink. So we might now have 190, uh, 195 bar, okay? Because we might only have five bar difference between the gate and the end of the cavity because we're injecting fast. 200 bar at the gate, 195 bar at the end of the cavity equates to just five bar pressure gradient. So we will now have equal shrinkage along this part because we've got a low pressure gradient.